this is our crop here after just a couple hours of light and just being uncovered overnight. So it's uh, you can see it's really coming coming along really well. I don't have the time to do a time lapse for this one, but I will do for future ones. So good growth. I do see, and you can see here, you can see some of the lack of uniformity in the germination. You've got some smaller sprouts down below and then some taller ones above. This is usually a result of different seed size, but can be uh, genetic as well, and, and there can be other factors. But overall, we've got a nice looking crop here, and I'm looking forward to seeing if we can still get this one matured. Um, by the 10th, November 10th, which is our goal and our original target and growth looks really good to me and we'll take another look at this tonight and we'll see it's actually going to green up quite a bit during during the day today. So I think we're pretty on target. So even though it stayed covered for six days, we should still be uh, be able to fall within our 10 day window. So now it's evening time. These have had their first first full day of light and you can really get a sense here of how much greener they are. And you can see many more of them opening up, shedding their holes, and obviously stretching towards that light. What you'll also notice is, is the stems have done a really good job of straightening out. After being a little bent from leaving it covered for a bit too long, they've straightened themselves out really well. And sunnies are really good for that. And as I pointed out previously, there is um, some shorter ones in there, but that's fine. The other thing I do on a daily basis is give this a lift, just to feel the weight there. I can feel this, there's still a lot of water in there. So I'm not going to bother, wa bother watering these today, and I may only need to water them one time before I harvest or my target harvest on Saturday, November 10th. Here we are at the beginning of day two of light, November the 9th, and you can see we've got really good growth here. Uh, the hulls are shedding. As, as I'm sitting in my kitchen, I can hear the odd pop of the hull on the floor. So just a note that I was avoiding talking about before, you will be doing more sweeping than usual due to this production system. So this is crop is, is actually well on schedule. We have all day today and all day tomorrow to meet our, our target um, harvest time on November 10th. And probably would be uh, maybe even a little bit more ahead if I would have uncovered in the morning. It would have just had a little more time to stretch and green up. So really happy with our progress. And basically we are looking at a nine day schedule sowed and soaked on the uh, on the 2nd of November and to be harvested on the 10th. So that's not a bad schedule at all, um, considering I'm keeping my temperature pretty low and that makes me quite happy with uh, the crops I'm getting. And I do find with sunflower that growing them at the lowest possible temperature to get the best possible result gives me my best yield. And what I mean by that is I could have a higher temperature and get a much better yield, uh, but I wouldn't get as good a product. So having just enough heat to, to have them grow at a reasonable rate usually gives you the best sunflower. Even though they're a heat loving crop, um, you know, the sunflower is typically grows into a large flower and we're thinking about it as a microgreen. So a little bit of coolness, cool nights and not too hot in the day gives us a really nice microgreen. So really happy with crop progress so far. And then the interesting thing on harvest time, which I'll probably do in the evening of the 10th, will be to see what, uh, what our yield is and what our seed to microgreens ratio is with this crop. Here we are at the end of two days of light. So you can see what you're, what you're always looking for is good steady growth. You want your crop to be greening up and this crop is doing everything it should. Uh, even at a fairly cool temperature, um, you know, probably less than anywhere from 20 to 22 degrees Celsius in my apartment. Uh, and my place tends to keep fairly warm um, relatively without any heat because I'm on the top floor and other people's uh, heat works their way up into my place. So even without my heat on, it stays reasonable in here. Oh, that's a nice shot through the forest. So you can see, even though I was complaining about this seed being very uneven size wise, uh, we're getting very uniform growth. And I will tell you one of the main factors in that is definitely going to have been the 30 pounds of weight on top that really helps even out the growth. So I have another full day of light. So this is the night time of day two of light on uh, November 9th. So um, yeah, we're getting a really nice looking crop here. I may end up harvesting this the not tomorrow night, but the following morning. So technically on day 10, uh, but that's fine with me. When you're doing commercial production, it's really, really important for your crop to be ready at a specific time because you usually have set deliveries and, and set markets. 
but for home um, production, if this goes an extra day or half day, it really doesn't matter unless I have intense production and I need to open up this space for the next crop. I should already have my second crop soaked and sown, but um, I'm just a little busy right now and I'm not quite in that routine yet, but uh, I'm really happy with the results of my first one so far and we'll be having a sunflower shoot salad some point over the weekend. Here we are on the morning of November 10th, which is day nine in our cycle. And one of the reasons I like to show you both evening and morning images and videos is to demonstrate how much a crop changes in both cycles. You would expect a lot of change, uh, especially in greening up in, uh, throughout the day when they're exposed to light. But amazingly, the overnight process as well really makes significant change. So here you can see this to me, this to me, this crop is now ready to harvest. Uh, it's at a suitable height. Um, I'm not seeing one thing I'm looking for, and there's a really good example here. So I'm looking for the next set of leaves. So you can see this little leaves here. So these two big leaves here, if you didn't know this already, those are the seed. Those are called the seed leaves or the cotyledons. And as the next set of leaves or the true leaves start coming in, this is when bitter compounds really start forming within your, your crop. And, and really it's, it's value as a, a delicate and, and nice tasting crop really starts to decline quickly. So one of the things we're trying to do is get our crop as big as we can uh, without getting too much seed leaf development uh, or true leaf development, sorry, because uh, that's going to ruin really the uh, quality of the crop. And a crop can go from very good to very bitter very fast, in, in especially in really hot conditions. So one thing I'll point out as well, the reason I say this crop is ready, is that there's a really nice stem to leaf ratio in terms of size. That to me, now I can grow this crop quite a bit taller before um, before it really starts to get bitter. But I really like this ratio, that sort of length of stem to, uh, to, to leaf size. These can be a little bigger and still maintain that. And, and the reason that ratio is important is because that's one of the things that's really, really important to chefs. Uh, when, when sunny start to get too long, they don't, they're not as aesthetically pleasing. They're very difficult to manage. Uh, you know, trying to pick them up on a fork, you might get like a stem sort of coming up and poking you in the nose or something. So that ratio actually is, is a quality issue. And some chefs like them even shorter. And of course, a, a shorter um, product means charging a higher price, which is also an option. So the thing that's a challenge with these, this crop at this height, as you can see, is there's still a lot of holes on here. These tiny ones here, of course, are, are, are still the hulls are a problem and the size is a problem and once again this gets back to the, the issue of seed size but i still see lots of hulls on top here so i know throughout the day today they're going to get they're going to get dropped and and that's probably the main thing that's going to cause me to to uh, keep this going all day and maybe into tomorrow morning as well uh, once again uh, that, that ratio isn't as important to me what's more important to me as, as a home grower is getting a, a good seed to microgreens ratio so I want as much volume out of this as I can because that's going to give me the most caloric and nutrition value. So we'll talk about how to deal with hulls and whatnot once we, we get to the harvest stage. But here we are in the morning of day nine, which is our harvest day, our projected harvest day. And we see we're off to a really good start. And we'll take a look at this again tonight just to see where we're at and whether we're going to harvest tonight or tomorrow morning. Here we are on the evening of day nine. I've just given this crop some water and you can see we've got a really, really nice crop here that's very, very much ready to be harvested. I'm just going to give it a little bit more time overnight because uh, I want a bit more growth uh, and I just don't feel like harvesting this tonight. And I also think we can shed some more of these hulls. So they'll get about three hours tonight, three hours in the morning of light, and this will be ready to do our first harvest and cutting, which I'm excited. And just, yeah, just keeping an eye. We see stuff is actually fairly consistent. I really look, when I'm looking at a crop, I really want to see something that looks like it could be a, like a carpet or a shag carpet. We are still seeing some of these if you look in here. Some stuff didn't germinate that well. Once again, some variation in the seed. But overall, we've got a pretty good crop here. And uh, I'm really uh, glad we put so much weight on top. I think that's made a real difference. And here we are on the morning of day 10, about to harvest our crop. So just one last review. So this is really, really where we want our, our crop to be at harvest time. 
nice and tall. We're not seeing anything flopping over, still, so things are still very firm. There's good turgidity in there. I think the watering last night really uh, helped things out. We can still see lots of little bits of uh, uh, smaller uh, microgreens here with hulls on, once again, and, and lots coming up in here, these sort of latecomers. And this again is, is just due to the, the different sizes and seed in this lot, which I am very unhappy with, but coping with. Uh, overall, you can see we've got fairly good uniformity, so I'm okay with that. A few little dips in there. Uh, a really good crop, it would be just, it would be perfectly uniform. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is just looking for uh, true leaf development. And really we see stuff like this that has a little bit of true leaf starting but nothing really else coming in, even on the edges where they often get a little bit more light. So we've, we've timed things really well. We've got a really, really nice looking crop here. And now what we're going to do is, uh, is harvest it, uh, which generally means cutting the crop. We're gonna start with a knife and see how well that works. And then if that doesn't work, we'll use scissors. Uh, then we want to remove the hulls uh, just because they're very unpleasant to eat. Uh, some of these are going to pop off really easily when we brush the top. Others we'll have to pick up manually. Then we want to give it a, a quick dip in some cool water. And then we're going to... Uh